Hey guys, this is Rasanik and this is She Wolf Alchemy. So today we're talking about friends of the opposite sex or friends of whatever sex you are attracted to. Is it possible to be friends? So Nick, what is your take on this just in general? Sometimes I feel like it has to be a friend if it's like a group setting, one-on-one. That works well with me because I don't have a lot of male friends. I literally think I only have one that there isn't anything between us. And that was like in a group setting. That's how I feel about that. But for me personally, it's it can happen if there are rules, I think. But for me personally, I only have like one friend that I think I can call a friend that's a guy. Yeah, I am like, I think it's very possible. I grew up with seven boys. So when I was younger, a lot of my, I used to have like three female friends and the rest of my friends would be boys just because that's what I was used to being around all the time. So I definitely think it's possible. I think the older you get, the harder it is to make new friends of the opposite sex. I think as long as you guys knew each other when you were like younger, then it's easy to maintain those friendships and it'd be a good thing. I think the older you get, the harder it is to meet people of the opposite sex and everybody be on the same page that this is friendship. It's going to stay friendship. And that's it. I think the older you get, the harder it is to make that happen. I agree. Like, I know we talked about a lot of times, like you have more guy friends and I, I always just hung back with a whole bunch of girls. Mm hmm. So, like, all my friends that in the past that I did call friends that were guys, it's just friends that we hung together as a group in high school or middle school. But it was, like, a whole bunch of us. And we look out for each other, but it wasn't, like, a one-on-one close bestie or at all. At least not for me. I'm more of a girly girl or a girl's girl than a girl that hangs with a guy. So that was just my, my um, take on it. And, like, as you get older, it's just, like, nobody wants to be a friend. They just... <laughs> Like they just want to like I just want to like I don't know it doesn't seem like no friends like no they just want to get closer and do things so I don't I, I, can't, I can't take it serious as much yeah I well I mean now as an adult in my 30s I don't have that many guy friends and it's because of that reason one because I moved a lot so the guy friends that I did have like one of my guy's friends is married to my old roommate so like me and him still check on each other like hey what's good and you know we knew each other from college and i had can i just say i feel like i said this before i tried to hook them up like after a week of knowing him i was like oh my gosh you would be perfect for my roommate and he was on it and she just was like i mean i don't like being hooked up and <laughs> they could have been happy and married like six years before they started dating and every time i talk to him i make sure to bring that up well her I make sure to bring it up like, oh, hey, oh, you guys are so cute. It's going good. Uh, ain't you mad that you could have had six more years of this, but you didn't want to listen? Um, <laughs> I knew that, but how did they get together finally? I don't know. I think they were like following each other on social media. And mm -hmm. this is a story I'm pretty sure he told me. I hope I didn't make this up, y'all. <laughs> I'm pretty sure what he told me is they were following each other on social media and one day either she or he posted like yo I'm bored give me some some PlayStation 2 code name like so I can play whatever game with you if you guys send me your names and whoever posted the other one said their name and they started playing video games together and that's how it started yeah. and they're cute and he's he's such a good guy like he is one of my few guy friends ever in life that like, if any of my girlfriends was like, do you have somebody I could hook you up with? He would have been the person. Cause he's a really, really good guy. I think you have mentioned me before too. Yeah, <laughs> maybe, maybe. Cause he, ever since I know him, he was marriage minded. Yeah, he's, he seems like a sweet guy. So it worked out. Yeah, like when he was 18, he was very, I want to get married. I want to be a father. I want to be a provider. Universe, make it happen. And I'd be like, I'm trying. Ryan to help the universe. <laughs> Friends are hard headed. <laughs> but yeah, for me now, I don't, it, because of the same reasons you stated, like it's just so hard. You know about a situation I had recently where I had made a new guy friend because we had to be in the same environment together mm -hmm. for projects. 
And so, uh, and it was going good. And I enjoyed his company. We would go out, get lunch in groups. And then sometimes just us, no problem. And all of a sudden, real, real flirty stuff started coming out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. And like, I had to just back away. We haven't put bases on that lately. Yeah, no, it's going great. I just stopped hanging with him, really. <laughs> like, <laughs> I just stopped hanging with him because I was just like, yo, this is making me real, really, really uncomfortable. Um, just the, the way the switch up happened, I was like, oh, hold on. Um, you know, some other factors involved. But the older you are, the more that can happen i definitely feel like when i was younger even when i was in college i met a lot of guy friends and don't get me wrong like i definitely had had conversations with some of them like we're friends mm-hmm. you know please don't make me give up this friendship but it was like yeah. i only had that conversation once and we were good to go the closer i got to 30 <laughs> the harder that conversation became the harder like yeah. it would be it, it was like y'all had to have it multiple times with grown men and i'm like you understand english i don't understand why we keep having to have this conversation and why we can't just like keep it that way cordial i don't know yeah well after a while if i have to have the conversation so many times yeah now we can't even be cordial because you've made it awkward but mm-hmm. you know what one thing i will say male listeners don't get mad at us because our male listenership keeps growing <laughs> And I don't know why, because I feel like every week I'm just like, and y'all males. I promise I don't hate males. <laughs> right? It's just life experiences, man. But no, I found that men will throw away friendship for three months of <laughs> beyond friendship things. Like men will throw away years of friendship for sex. And it's always so weird to me. I'm just like, why would you go away so much? And that's why I said, there's no need to cross those lines because after a while, I feel that we as women are like, we should just stay friends. At least that's my oh, experience yeah. with that. Yeah. Well, and here's my thing is like, if we cross that line, we're, we can't go back to being friends. One, y'all know my yeah. rule. I, I I cut off all exes. We are, we're not friends. We're not talking. We're not like, I just move on my life. You now disappeared to me. Like you are now, you are dead to me right now. Okay. You're going to have to call me through a seance. Like that's what I mean when I say dead. So with me, I always end up having to have this conversation where I'm like, unless you feel like I am the love of your life and you can convince me to marry you, let's not do this because once we cross that line, when I cut stuff off, I cut stuff off. And men are always just like, yeah, okay. And you're like, sorry, we've been like, best friends you. for eight years. Why? And more, but yeah. Yeah. But one of my coworkers, but again, it was like a group setting. Um, and we all hung together everywhere. It was never just us two, one-on-one. Mm-hmm. So it was just like, this is really a friend. Um, and he came like, over to help me move, help me put up stuff because I'm a single mom. And, and we all carry each other like family. Um, we all say, I love you. I love you, however they say it. They say it differently. <laughs> different. But I still love them. But it was it was all in a setting of like, that was one person I could say I really could consider him like a brother mm-hmm. and a friend. But then it, it might be because we never did like a whole bunch of one-on-one stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, once I left that job, he asked, like, oh, maybe we can kick it and get drinks and food. But I never did it. Mm-hmm. He has come to, like, help me put up, put together stuff, help me move things. But usually I ask, ask, ask one other person. But I know one time he did it by himself, and it wasn't no awkwardness. But I think it's because we set the boundary as, like, we're a whole group of family members. <laughs> Our friends, like, close friends. <laughs> <laughs> so what nick is saying guys is that you have to trick men into thinking this will be incestuous <laughs> make them feel shame for hitting on you guys we are brother and sister now. <laughs> like no. i really consider him like a really close friend and he's been there for me so i've been there for him through his divorce but we never crossed lines we just had to understand that like we ain't crossing those lines yeah, 
I've had that. I just, I don't think, I don't think I have any of that anymore. There's some that I'm close with still. Like right now, I don't have any guy friends that I regularly check on. But yeah, I've definitely had that in the past where it really was someone who like we feel comfortable. That feels like my brother. The thought never even crossed my mind. Um, And they didn't cross lines. Uh, yeah. We might have had a conversation where it's like, hey, you know, kind of like you, like, you know, I don't mean you do something, just us. And I'm like, no. And they're like, okay. So and we just go back to status yeah. quo. Like, a group thing? That's not kind of a good thing. Like, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, but see, also, I used to, but you know what? You know I'm bad at it. So remember, I'm not going to say their name. There was a guy that we both had a class with, and we, me and him were real cool. Like, I used to braid his hair, everything. And you were like, he likes you. And I was like, no. And like, it never crossed my mind ever. You yeah. know who I'm talking about? Yeah, I do. It was clear to me and Liz that he likes you. <laughs> I did not know because again, me once you're a friend, like you're a friend. That's yeah. all you are. You're your friend. And don't get me wrong, I will say uh, my longest relationship was with somebody who I was friends with. But 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 I want to put it out there. When we met, we both met on like wanting to date. We just lived in different states, so we had to become friends. So we did date at that point. But I don't think I have any guys that like we started off friends like nothing more but friends there was never any flirtation and then it morphed into oh wait yep once time in high school no twice twice oh my gosh i'm lying twice <laughs> and it both turned out horrible none of them are in my life now so <laughs> yeah 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 Same with me i had a friend cross line mm-hmm. and then we still are quote-unquote friends I have been- <laughs> okay explain your quote-unquote it don't, it's not the same. The elephant in the room didn't happen. Yeah. Yeah. And we just like kind of go over that. And I just have to keep, I have to keep the lines clear. Like, no, that was a moment. It's never going to happen again. I still love you and I still care about you. I still want the best for you and your family because we were that close because we knew each other for years. It had to be more than 10 years. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, dang, like even more than that. So we're going to keep it cordial and I have to keep it that way. And if I do happen to like see this person that come in town or whatever this or that, it's just like I'm gonna keep this, keep it this line straight for I'm not and like he might want to cross that line again, but it's not happening. Yeah. But it's not the same. It's just awkwardness in yeah. the air to me at least. But it's not like the same close bond that we had before where it probably would have been better if we didn't cross those lines. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I definitely agree with that. And I feel like most of the people I know, like once they date a friend, they can't go back to being friends. Right. Well, and my child's father, me and him are back to being friends, but we have to be like, I'm not allowed to cut him off because then he'll stick lawyers on me. So that I was probably that's the only one, but me and him are friends. But other than that, I agree with you. It, it's too awkward. If, if the woman is telling you like, can we just please keep friendship? Can y'all just listen? Girl. Girl. <laughs> like, uh. Yeah. Well, and the other one, so the other one, I was still young. Like, once, once I got over 20, I was like, yeah, we not doing this. But um, <laughs> I was like 18, and I had known him since I was like 12. And we, he was from my hometown. I was in up north. Uh, I had moved. I was up north. We were still cool. And then it, we... End up dating when I moved because when I moved for college, I was like only 40 minutes away. And he is the biggest reason why I'm like, no, I will never date friends. We were dating, and again, one of those you pursued me, I did not pursue it. You pursued it, you pressed hard. He this man had a whole like four year relationship. Keep in mind, me and him were friends, and I did not know about this girl. He was in like a whole four year relationship. I proposed to her and everything and he had like bought the ring before we started dating so this means like you pursued me knowing you bought a ring for another woman knowing that you're about to propose to another woman so with him I remember like the last conversation having with him was like at the very least I thought you respected me enough as a friend to not put me in these type of situations 
And I think that mm-hmm. is one of the issues you come into when you date friends is that you want to go into it thinking, well, this is safe because even if it doesn't work out, they're my friend at the end of the day. And there's certain things they won't do because we are friends. We have this history. We know each other's heartbreaks. You, There's this mutual respect that you won't do the shitty thing because we're friends. And the problem is people don't follow those rules. No. So for me, it was like heartbreaking because he was like my best friend. Like he knew all my deepest secrets, like call each other crying over whatever was happening. Like at one point in time, um, he had got kicked out his mom's house, got off her insurance, got real sick. And like, I put on my social worker hat and was like calling around, figuring out where he can go to get medicine for free where he could go to get checked up and how to get there and what agencies would make sure he had a bus ticket. Cause he was young at the time. This is when we were friends. He was like 17. He was kicked out unexpectedly. So stuff like that. And so like, it really broke my heart. Cause I was like, at the end of the day, I'm like, I would think like, because of our history, because you say you love me as a person, like as a friend, as a human being, love me. Why would you do that? Handle me. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so after that, definitely I was like, you know what? No, no, because, yeah, no, no. Because, and then also you have that kind of conflict where it's like, because you're my, or at least with me, because you're my friend, I don't want to, I don't want to show you that other side of my other Gemini. Like, you know how they say Gemini has two sides. I don't want to show you that other side. And you're going to do something <laughs> to make me want to show you the other side. And it might be hard for us to recover from that. So, all that to say, in my experience, it's a no-go to date them, but being friends, if you can have someone that understands, like, no, we are friends, this is what friendship means, it's good. Have you ever, like, dated a guy who had, like, a female best friend that you, how did you feel about that? So, I have, and, like, the first one, it was cool. Like, I didn't have no issue with her. Like, she was cool. She was respectful. It was no problem. And then I dated another guy more recently who was like that with his ex. And I did not like it. And it wasn't comfortable because she did not respect boundaries. She made it very clear all the time that she loved him, wanted to be with him, was waiting for him. And I didn't like that. I honestly yeah. felt like he enjoyed leading her on, which also made me resent him and kind of be like uh, I don't know if I like you as a person yeah. and I didn't and I didn't, I really really didn't like that because like I, I stopped going on his social media <laughs> and I didn't go often but you know how there's stuff I don't I, I just I try not to go on people I date social media anymore I just why make myself mad for no reason so with him it was like that but you know how they'll just pop up on your feed because you guys follow each other yeah. and I remember one time going through a picture of his and she was the first comment it was this big long paragraph and I was like fuck <laughs> and so I I got nosy so then I went to his page and was looking through and I'm like every time you post something she's the first person to comment and own everything and then I went to her page and she still had like pictures from them from like and keep in mind they had been broken up for like five years she still had pictures of them from like five years ago up and I was just like see I don't like that I don't like this even if, and I didn't feel like he had feelings for her. I really feel like it was an ego thing for him. But I did not like that she didn't respect boundaries. I think, again, when it's a respectful friend who like understands you're in a relationship, there are lines, they aren't trying to get you in trouble with your person, then it yeah. works. But when I don't, I, I, for me, I can't do it. I, we can't date if you have a female friend who you know wants you. And you're still keeping it there. And it's I not think, the- I think even if it's your ex, what? Like how that was, that was kind of boundary crossing. Yeah. So this is the way I keep it in mind. Me and Kari's dad are really close. Me and my daughter's dad are really close. So like, even when we were doing a podcast, I was like, darn, I need a computer because we're recording. I'm recording on my iPad. Even when I'm buying these fancy mics, it's not working. And he built me a computer. For most people, that would be an issue. Like, why is your ex building you a computer? Yeah. I guess, but, yes, your child's father, you have to keep in contact with him regardless. But I guess he don't have to build your computer. 
Yeah, but that's the that's the friendship we have. Matter of fact, he just came over my house Sunday and set up my mom's computer and bought her a monitor because she she couldn't find her monitor. So <laughs> I can see some, but I can see somebody stepping into that and being like, "What?" But also, you know me and his relationship, and you know, like, oh no, I never have to worry about anything happening between y'all. Yeah, I mean that's just him. Yeah, like, if I was down there and say something happened i could see like if i lived down there like all the time if something happened with me and you and you were me and my car was messed up i could see him coming over there like that's just him and he that's just back. him yeah i don't know like if you were dating a guy he'd be like uh no i get yeah. that yeah so but that's why i try to get benefit down now of course if i was in a relationship those are things i would reconsider because i'm like hey you buying me and building me something that might be an issue so, you know, if I was in a relationship, I would move differently. I wouldn't. But, you know, I'm single. I don't want to be in love. I have decided to be the fly rich auntie with a daughter. <laughs> and that's my that's my plan for the rest of my life, huh? You can be my baby's fly rich auntie. Yes, I plan to be your baby's fly rich auntie who is just out here making moves, happy with her money. I plan to be Mr. Krabs. Look, I'm trying to be Uncle Krabs. I'm trying to be married to money. I want to go home to a bed of money. <laughs> and that's what's keeping me warm. Like, that is the new goal. I have already settled in my mind. Like, we're not doing love, but we are doing money. But yeah, with that said... Your example. But me, I had a saying, well, I had two situations where, I don't know, I was side-eyeing a girl. Um... When I was in younger, I was 21-ish or 23, whatever, um, he had a, a best friend that was a girl. And I remember one time he got drunk and he thought he was trying to talk to her. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, it's sitting there. I don't know, but that one was hard for me to, because I don't know. I know one time I asked, we had like similar birthdays. We had similar names. Mm-hmm. So it was just like, really like is this just a friend have y'all crossed boundaries like it makes you like skeptical and thinking about it but then I had another situation where this guy had a a best friend too and we ended up being very close like we're so close to this day but so that wasn't a much of a like a it wasn't anything I had had to worry about so I guess it can go either way yeah um the reason I came up with this topic because I was actually watching this show the other day. It was called uh, Family or Fiance. Mm-hmm. And she had like, a best friend that was a guy. And she had separation issues. And she was like, this guy never left her, even though she didn't want to be with him. Mm-hmm. But the guy wanted to be with her. So he was just there. First of all, I feel attacked, but keep going. <laughs> so he wanted to be with her. <laughs> I've <laughs> definitely never done that. Keep going. <laughs> So he wanted to uh, be with her or whatever. And then they had to do like little experiments or little uh, activities to get to know the to get to know the other person. Mm-hmm. So yeah. the fiance, which was the guy, he had to try to get to know his his soon to be wife's people. And so she brought her best friend, which is the guy, her mom and her sister. So the best friend going to say, yeah, we kissed back in college. They did not kiss. He just made up that to he just made up that to get into this guy's head. And oh, yeah. she said, I trusted him. And that's a situation where it's just like some guys do just stick around. If it don't work with anybody she talked to, I'm gonna be there and I'll be with her. Uh, what is it that's uh somebody that just pries over you like a predator? Yeah, basically. Start thinking about it like that's a lot of how a lot of guys act. I'm not trying to put y'all under the bus or nothing. But that's like <laughs> First how it of is. All, throw Greyhound on there. Yes. <laughs> We're gonna win, waiting for y'all to turn. That's not a best friend. That's the predator. Yeah. And yeah. you know other ways to get to her because she's crying to you about different guys. Like you're their shoulder, she leans on her. You know exactly how to operate. Like, that's not right. That's not really a true best friend. Nor is that true love. Because yeah. like if I love you, I'm not going to mess up anything you have going on that makes you happy. If mm-hmm. we're meant to be together, it'll mess up on its own. I ain't got to do nothing. Mm-hmm. And then when time comes, time will come. But 
when people do messy things like that, even with, because I never had a guy friend do that that I'm aware of, but I know I've had female friends do situations like that to me. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was like in high school, I remember the girl that was my best friend in high school, there was a boy that we both liked. Mm-hmm. Neither of us really knew him. We were just about like, oh, he's so cute. Oh, he he said that joke and it was funny. I like him. And it was one of those situations. And, you know, we were both like, I mean, whoever, get him, get him, you know, whatever. And he ended up mm-hmm. liking me. Mm-hmm. He asked me on a date. We went on a date. I told her when I told her, she seemed perfectly fine about it. And we went on our date. I was telling him like, cause I think we went to watch movies and I was like, I really wanted some brownies. So they don't sell brownies. And so he made me a plate and smuggled in a plate of brownies for me. Oh, we had a great time, whatever. And then I ended up telling her the next day, she's like, well, how'd it go? I was like, it was good. And we made out and blah, blah, blah. And she then went and told him like, uh uh-huh. Well, she was saying, you know how y'all were made out and you was just a little bit handsy. And I, you know, you was kind of inappropriate and she really wished you didn't do that. And now she feels weird about it. So he had texted me, obviously. Cause he was like, I thought we had a good time. And I was like, yeah. He was like, well, why is blank, blank, blank telling me? And keep in mind, when he told me this, I was with her at the time. Mm-hmm. So uh, he's texting me and I'm reading a text. And I just look at her. I said, hey, let me see your phone. She's like, what? I was like, let me see your phone. Why you want to see my phone? Let me see your phone. She She knew what it was. So you're willing to hurt your quote unquote best friend to get at me. Like, so is that really your best friend? You're just a mess person. Yeah. Yeah. And again, you don't know how to love if that's how it works. All right. So what are the rules to help everyone stay on track when you're deciding to be friends with the opposite sex or whatever sex you are attracted to? Mm hmm. So we looked up a few things from the experts and we're just going to talk about them. So one, keeping everything strictly platonic. So if you're getting ready to go out and you're like looking like, oh, I wonder what they like this. <laughs> like this on me. Mm-hmm. Um, sis or bruh. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, no, if you're doing all of that, it's just like you're already crossing lines. So it's basically you need to check yourself and see this must be more than just a friend. You need to check yourself. Yeah. I agree. I think when talking about keeping everything strictly platonic, it it means your thoughts as well. It means, like you Mm -hmm. said, when you're going out together, it shouldn't be like, oh, you know, I want him to look at me and be like, ooh, like, no, if that's your friend, it shouldn't be like dress appropriately for the venue, but it shouldn't be because you Mm want to get their eye. And then also little things like, because I've seen this happen. I've seen this happen where people are like their friends, but then they do things like they play, fight, and they'll sit mm-hmm. on each other's lap and rub each other's head and things like that. And I'm just like, you look, if that's your friendship and you feel comfortable, I am by no means saying don't create your friendship. We are all different beings. We all take in love in different types of way. And love can be strictly platonic for one person. And it can be something I consider romantic for me. But I think for a lot of people, it should go without saying in order to keep the friendship without crossing any lines that someone, um, there shouldn't be any like caressing them on their face. There should be no reason you're sitting on their lap. Oh, your your feet hurt and there's nowhere else to sit and he should get his big behind up. <laughs> yes. Oh, his feet hurt and he don't want to get his big behind up. Well, since you're not the girl, so I guess you're going to stand. Like, <laughs> that's just how I look at it. Because I've been in situations with male, I've been in situations with male friends where when I was in undergrad, she had some game. I think she was in soccer. A mm-hmm. soccer tournament or whatever. He asked me to go with him. And I went because he didn't want to sit by himself. And I was living right next to the campus at the time. So I went and I didn't expect it to be cold because soccer usually happens in like warmer months. Yeah. But it was cold and I was like shivering. And he was like, yo, here, let me give you my jacket. I was like, nope, we're not going to do <laughs> uh, what I don't want happening is her looking over at you, smiling that she's about to kick the wind and grow and realize I got on your jacket. Yeah, yeah. That wouldn't even be, yeah. 
Yeah. I feel like it would be one of those situations where it's, I'm not going to say nothing because I may be doing too much because, yes, it's cold. She might need a jacket. But, like, also, I'm not speaking to you for three days. And I don't want to be the cause of that. Mm-hmm. And I think this is especially important when one of you guys are taken. Yeah. 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 Because there's, there's a thing of married men not knowing how to be platonic and... If me and you are friends, and I keep having to remind you that you have a wife, or this friendship is ending. Girlfriend, yeah. I know a female that left her husband for her whole best friend. So, yeah, yeah. Probably female still, but but also I think it's important to ask if you're dating somebody and they have a best friend. Straight up ask. Okay, so I have you and you two ever dated? Because I think mm-hmm. that can be very telling. Because sometimes they're just like, oh, no. Cause, you know, we're goofy and so forth. But, like, I'm romantic. And she throw knives. And I just don't want to deal with that. And that's a good answer. Cool. All right. You don't want to get yeah. knives thrown. Probably not going to venture into there. But if you ask them and, you're, and their answer is something like, I mean, you know, we really want to. And you're younger. But timing was just never right. And she was single. But, and I was single. Blah, blah, blah. So, you know, we kind of just finally gave up. And blah, blah, blah. Mm-mm. Those are situations you got to watch out for. <laughs> because what they're saying, no, we have an attraction to each other. We have an emotional bond to each other. The only thing that has stopped us is life circumstances. So the minute life circumstances matching up right, there's a big chance we're going to get together. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> Sometimes whether you're with them or not. So it's it's a problem. But yes, I agree keep it strictly platonic don't do any line crossing type things like holding hands but it's cold girl curl your fist into a ball and squeeze that produces heat you'll be fine yeah you know don't y'all go in somewhere and letting him piggyback ride you you know like and I'm sorry I know this sounds juvenile but no I've seen this happen in the groups of 30 to 42 year olds recently but be platonic don't cross lines if you think to yourself eh, is this crossing a line the answer is yes if you had to think about it it's yes mm-hmm. so i am gonna go to the next one okay respect each other's feelings at all times so To me, this is one of the most important rules uh, of any friendship, Um, opposite gender, same gender, friendships in general. It is so important to respect your friend. And if your friend is saying like, okay, I I don't want to be with you in that way. I just want us to be friends. Respect that. You don't have to like it, but respect that. If your friend is saying, hey, I'm in a relationship. And I don't like when you do things that make me feel like I'm betraying my partner or I'm getting close to betraying my partner. Mm -hmm. You as a friend should be like, yo, my bad, and back off. Respecting them as a person. And I think a big part of that as well is also respecting the other person who may be coming forth saying, you know, I have feelings for you. blah 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 even when you don't want that there's still a respectful way to do it like we don't have to cuss them out Mm -hmm. we don't don't have to just leave the text on red like there is a a way to be like hey so I hear what you're saying is you have feelings for me these feelings are running deeper than our current friendship and you want to see if there can be any expression of your feelings together out here in the real Mm -hmm. world okay i i see that and i understand that and i can see why you might say that but for me unfortunately i um my body just does not want your body thank you for coming to my ted talk (laughs) (laughs) i feel like that's the quickest shortest way to end that conversation Uh, no 
I'm oh, trying to tell oh. you the quick, cheap way to have this conversation done and over. It's just my body don't want your body. And then you can just turn around and finish eating. He gonna be mad. But like, <laughs> I found the minute you are like, hey, sexually, I don't want you. Um, they shut it down. They finna shut it down. So yeah, that's they a nice way of saying it. that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Next one. Um, nothing you say, do, or think should be a secret to anyone around you. Mm-hmm. So basically. If we have to sneak around to do whatever we're doing, or if we have to sneak, oh, let's go to the movies, we have to do this or do that, especially if one of the pe- people are in a relationship, or if you can't even tell your family or anybody that you're doing this thing, you shouldn't be doing it. And that's crossing lines of the so-called friends. It's a problem. If you do anything that you, if whatever y'all were doing, if your partner walked in and saw, if you would go into full grown panic attack mode that means you need to not be doing that Mm -hmm. that's Mm -hmm. just the way I keep it in my head if my partner was right here watching this would I do this Yeah. would I feel comfortable doing whatever this is even um, if it's their partner just be like you know what if his his girl came in and saw whatever it is we're doing and it could be something like um, sitting on the lap because there's no more seats on the bus or the shuttle but would your wife feel away about that? If his wife came in, would you feel comfortable still sitting like that? Mm-hmm. If the answer is no, then you should not be doing it any other time. Yeah. So I definitely agree about that not having secret behavior, but it even goes beyond just spouses. Secret behavior, it could be between secret behavior between y'all two that friends don't know about, coworkers don't know about. That's like, yeah, it can be anybody. If you don't want even your friends to know that you're doing this or mm-hmm. a coworker or whatever, that's a problem. Because it's like you're doing things that are more than just friends. Mm-hmm. So that's a problem. Mm-hmm. The need to keep something in secrecy is the need to feel like it's something that can't be out in the open. Mm-hmm. And if it can't be out in the open... So that's something there's some part of it that's wrong yeah yeah and next we have make sure your partner has met your friend and feels comfortable with them if you have a partner or if your friend has a partner you should all meet and spend time together it's not good if you spend time away as friends but never include the partners um I definitely think with this one just clarifying yes you have friends and you don't have to bring your spouse every time y'all hang but yeah i do think it's something suspicious if your partner is never around when you're hanging mm-hmm. like if your partner doesn't know what i look like besides by stalking my instagram mm-hmm. it's a problem mm-hmm. you know if i don't know what she looks like that's the problem yeah. so I definitely feel like that is really important. I I think it's especially important with dudes because I feel like with men, they're more like hyper aggressive. So I could definitely see it being an issue if I'm just talking with a partner and being like, hey, Mo is flying up from Cincinnati and Mm -hmm. he's coming here. He's going to come stay at my crib. You know, I got an extra bedroom, whatever. And... I'm going to wait till he gets here so I can get open the door for him and then I'm going to drive and be on my way. As my, uh, my partner, I can definitely see a man being like, uh-huh, so this man I ain't never met. Stand at your house. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> am, I, am I going to meet him? Um, usually when 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 you try to come back to your house, are, are we doing that? Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> you, do you want to meet him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you have that whole you keep them separate from each other that just really giving me families on the other side of town yeah i guess i'm guilty of this one before i was dating somebody uh, sometimes we were serious sometimes we were but i went to go to like a church event in another state me and my sister and i stayed with my best friend he's a guy his mom was with me like we all stayed at the house but i guess I didn't make that very clear that I was staying with him. 
And then he found out that I was staying with him and he kind of like blew up. Yeah. And I, at the time, I didn't see a problem with it because I'm like, this is very platonic. And his whole mom was was with us. Me and my sister, like, slept in the bed and him and his mom slept on the couch. Like, I don't see anything wrong with it, but I guess it's just not being all the way honest. But goes back to if you don't feel comfortable telling your yeah. partner, you shouldn't be doing it. But I still don't feel like it was anything wrong. <laughs> I didn't do anything. Like, when I got down there, I met my best friend's girlfriend. I just felt that my person at the time would be feeling some type of way. But any guy probably would, might feel it some type of way, but they would feel it even more if you didn't, if you let the details out. So, yeah, never mind. Yeah, yeah. Take that <laughs> L. Take that L and wear it like a scarlet letter. I was like, that was good. Like, that's my best friend, and I met his girlfriend, and you need to chill out. Like, you need to chill out. It's not this serious. Yeah, so for me, that part has never been an issue, but I don't introduce the guys I date to people in general. Like, he knows y'all names. Like, of your, your guys, except for your child's father. Yeah, yeah, literally. I mean, you've been friends for about a decade now. Yeah. And oh, it's I mean, over a decade. It's been over a decade. Yeah. The only person you met willingly is the word was my child's father. The other one you wasn't supposed to meet. <laughs> Oh, I was like, I've definitely met this man. It's like, oh no, no. three, 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 the little ratchet boy. Okay, okay. Um, (laughs) Yeah, but yeah, so for me, I don't typically, I don't introduce y'all. I don't introduce y'all to, I have to. Me and Kendrick were together four years. You met him at the end of those years because I was engaged, pregnant, and walking the stage. Yeah, we had, and that was the first time I met. Um, <laughs> gosh, what are we talking about? <laughs> okay, so number five, you have to like know your boundaries, discuss your boundaries, keep up with your boundaries, so let's not cross these boundaries. If we need to make sure we stick to these boundaries for our thoughts' sake, for our sake, and just to keep this friendship going. And if it gets too hard, you might not want to be a friend anymore. I agree with the boundaries part. I think, you know, having clear cut rules. I don't think you necessarily have to bring it up. Like if this is a new friend, I don't think you necessarily have to bring it up the first conversation. Cause I think that can also be weird. Like, okay, once anything starts happening, you can be like, okay, hold on. Before we go any further, I want you to understand. I don't want to do anything that can be looked at as romantic. I've definitely been in situations where people didn't understand boundaries. And also, I think that's something you need to have with your partner beforehand, too. For example, if I was dating someone and my ex was here, and I would also have to have a conversation with the new guy of, like, okay, this is my ex. This is my child's father. We were best friends first, dated, got, no, got, got proposed to, said no, got pregnant, said yes. Are they together? try to build a home and then decided we're not building homes and separate you know i see him twice a week when i drop my daughter off i see him and when i drop her off we have a conversation the conversation is usually no longer than 10 minutes because it's hey uh she already ate she didn't take a bath she didn't take her vitamins didn't take melatonin i don't have to give her that and you know that's the conversations we're having yeah. So it's like, yes, I see him twice a week and each week we talk, but it's very much mom and dad duties with the occasional life update. Mm-hmm. Like he, he got a raise recently and when I dropped her off, he wanted to talk about it. So we did. We talked about it for like 20 minutes, but it's like, yay, because I knew you when you weren't doing nothing. So <laughs> look at you using your potential. Yeah. So things like that and making sure your partner understands like, yo. This is my relationship with them. And I'm personally open to if my partner is saying they have an issue to discuss those issues and seeing what I can take away or what I'm like, no, this I'm going to keep this because that's just ridiculous. So, but yeah, just talking to your partner as well to see what you guys both agree on at being respectful. It's not a matter of trying to control you. It's a matter of doing things to make your partner feel safe. Mm -hmm. 
And if making my partner feel safe means I don't sit out and hang with my ex for three hours on a Friday night, that makes sense to me. And I'm going to wind that back in. Right. I'm going to, hey, well, how about he come over to our house and we barbecue and hang out and chill. He can bring his girlfriend. Mm -hmm. We all get to know each other, hang out and chill. Stuff like that, like just compromise it. Mm -hmm. I agree. Another one I think is important is understanding what flirting is. Mm -hmm. I think this is hugely important because I feel like there's a lot of (coughs) men who... (laughs) (laughs) Who, like when you call them out on certain stuff, they're like, that wasn't even flirting. That's how she is with everybody. Right. They French. That's just how they do that there. I know. Like, you know she's flirting with you, right? Mm-hmm. You know that, right? No, 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 she's not. No, we just, no. Why are you acting like you don't know? Mm-hmm. So, ground rules about what flirting is and making sure, like, okay, This is what flirting is. This is a disrespect to my relationship. Mm -hmm. But even outside of relationships, if y'all want to be friends and your purpose is to remain friends, even if y'all both single, it's not smart to then start doing flirtatious things with your friend. Mm -hmm. I will say from what I've seen, when females do this, it's more out of just need somebody to make you feel like you still got it. Mm-hmm. It is, yeah. Don't use your friends for emotional <laughs> dumping grounds and trying to figure your stuff out. So overall, I think you can be friends with someone of the opposite sex or this is whatever sex you are attracted to. I think it's possible. I think it's you have your better odds when you guys know each other since childhood. And especially depending on how old you are. Like, if I've known yeah. you since I was two and now we're 18, eh, chance y'all have some line crossing territory to go through. <laughs> um, at 25, uh, it might be one. It might be one of them. Mm-hmm. That you're like, yeah, I'm going to give this a shot. But I really feel like by the time you're 30, if there's an old childhood friend, unless they got married at 18, and been married this whole time, and that's the only time you that's the only reason you didn't pursue. If you know them from childhood and you now 30, don't do it. Because between now and the, that's a long time to not fall for them. No, and it, it didn't happen, just don't. That's like a gene, that's a, like a real, real friendship, I think. Yeah, yeah. The whole time, that's like, no, and you're like, oh, lonely, and like, well, he really understands me, he gets me in and out. And sometimes, like you said, it's just you you have to examine why you're crossing those lines. Are you crossing the lines because he loves you so much and he feels like a safe place? Is well, that fair for him yeah. that you are only there because he provides safety? Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's a whole other thing. So, yeah, my conclusion is, is it something that can be done? Yes. Um if it's a new friend you met and it's like y'all only been friends for like three weeks, six months, girl, do you? Go have fun. I feel like once you built some type of longevity in, you need to keep just keep it at bay. Because, and here's the thing, after y'all, if y'all don't marry each other, after it doesn't work, let's say y'all are able to be friends. Now, Eventually, one of y'all going to date somebody and they're going to ask, okay, so nothing ever happened between y'all. Right. And if y'all aren't lying, you're going to have to say yes. And you got to understand that's going to turn a lot of people off. And they're not going to want to, yeah. Somebody's breaking up, whether it be the friendship or the relationship. Somebody is. Yeah. So again, a rundown, like 21 to 18. Yeah, girl, go ahead and do that. That's fine. Um, you know, you're going to get your little heart broken anyway. Might as well be by your friend. Um, be cautious. Be cautious. Yeah. I say only do it if you have butterflies and they have butterflies. Mm-hmm. Like both people are on the same page. Not one is hot and one is lukewarm. No. Your best friend can actually be 
Like you can start off friends and you fall in love, but it has to be the same page. It has to be the mm-hmm. same page. Mm-hmm. They say it's good to like be friends first in some situations, but again, same page, same like goals, ending goal, and everything. Yeah. Yeah. So when you cross it in one post, I'm like, uh, I guess we can try it. That's just gonna mess up everything. <laughs> mm-hmm. And it's hard to come back from that when one person loves and one is kind of like unsure and one foot in, one foot out. There's going to be, even if y'all able to mm-hmm. maintain their friendship afterwards, there's some resentment there. It might not mm-hmm. put up, pop mm-hmm. up that day. It might not pop up that week. Y'all can be at y'all mm-hmm. 85th birthday party and all of a sudden, Marianne wants you to know that she thought that was some bullshit. Exactly. You was a fuck boy then and you're a fuck boy now. <laughs> As she screams in front of all the elderly folks at the retirement center. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think once you're in that age, tread very, very lightly. But once you're 30 plus, this is just my own public opinion. Don't, don't. Whatever sex you're attracted to, be very careful about being friends with them over the age of 30. Make sure you're vetting. And I'm not saying that to say like, oh no, they're dangerous or whatever. But I think when you walk in the tension of friendship and that's all you need mm-hmm. and that's all you want, it can just be exhausting. Keep meeting people and thinking like, oh, this is a friend, getting in a group with them and then having to cut them off. Very, I'm very much looking and paying close attention to how they interact with me. Well, well you have to, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I definitely think that I think that the rules will help. I know they have a couple other rules, um, but I think those are really helpful. I think having friends of the opposite sex or the sex that you're attracted to can be a wonderful experience. One, because they can give you realistic tests of yourself. Like, um, well, if they're honest people, but I definitely have had male friends where like I was their sounding board. They would be like, yeah, and I, 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 I don't know. She was tripping. I was like, well, what did you do? You know, I told her I'll be there at eight and I was there at eight. And where was she? She wasn't dressed. So I pretended to take off and drove around the block. And now she calling me crying and I'm like I was just playing I'm coming back and and all this it's so petty and I'm like oh That's is it okay. petty or where you at so for all you know you triggered her fear of abandonment because mm-hmm. I find as long as it's a friend who isn't into them they can give good solid advice Great advice, yeah. yeah one of my homeboys like he cheated he cheated on his girl and he wanted to win her back and he already did all this stuff and he was telling me everything he did and I was telling him like okay well I think your best bet is yes you're sending her flowers obviously she don't want flowers you're doing this I was like you need to like go to her face to face on some key sweat begging type stuff because apparently the biggest issue was communication to show her you are working on your communication. Right. So God, sometimes guys need that little extra advice or a woman's, a woman's side of it. I mean, a woman's perspective. But I think a woman can appreciate a man's perspective in, sometimes, in some instances too. But again, it has to be keeping the same, you know, lines of friendship. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> me and you are opposite on everything. Yeah. I don't find male's advice too women helpful at all i just don't i don't the things they be telling me okay this is how i look at it i feel like when women when women give advice to their male friends i'm like oh you should do this and this is how women want to be treated we think of women as a collective so we're talking collectively most women like flowers collectively most women want communication and you to open up your heart to them collectively I feel like with male friends, at least with my male friends, it's always been like, uh, well, you should buy him a Panthers jersey. 
I should buy him a what? <laughs> you should buy him a Panthers jersey. He does not like the Panthers. You like the Panthers. He probably is a Panthers fan. Like, that's how my advice with them goes. Like, it's very direct to how they want someone to handle them without taking in consideration. Like, yes, you, you are a financially well off 37 year old who owns his own car, owns his own home, but your master bedroom is decorated in Mario Kart, everything. You have a different mindset than him. <laughs> you and him have different mindsets. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. I just feel like all the advice all my male friends have given me has always made me be like, all right, well, this is why I don't ask for advice from y'all. Okay. So, Neek, going forward, could you date somebody that had a female best friend? Uh. Um, I guess I'll just set my boundaries for it. Like, I would like to meet her. I don't want, like, this late night talk and situation. Like, you know, you have one friend doing that. I just, I guess I'll have to set my boundaries and on top of that, meet her. And I would be okay with it, I believe. Maybe. What about you? I honestly think I could as long as they have a healthy boundary and... Yeah, I could. So I'm going to say have a healthy boundary. And when I feel a boundary is being crossed or something's happening I'm uncomfortable with, that you are willing to sit down with me and compromise on that. Because mm-hmm. I'm not a big believer in like, no, I want you to cut her off. I am not a big believer yeah. in that. Uh, now, crazy ex is yes. Crazy ex mm-hmm. is yes. Because I definitely dated someone who had an ex that like, Every time we posted pictures together, um, would, um, like, oh my gosh, look at y'all. You used to never want to take pictures like that with me. <laughs> y'all cute. Or, uh, even when I got engaged and I posted my engagement post, she had posted something on his page, not my, um, I end up seeing it later. But basically he, she posted something like, oh, I see you're engaged. Apparently, you're not afraid of commitment anymore. LOL. I'm just joking. Look at that rock. Okay. okay. Like, yeah. yeah. Stuff like that. And I was just like, mm-hmm. So that was an ex. I asked him to cut off. Mm. And she kept doing things. I remember one time this girl came to town to do a lash convention or something. Mm. I don't know. The lash convention was in Atlanta. Booked a hotel in Alpharetta because me and him were living in Alpharetta. Like, down the block from us like the mm-hmm. hotel was like down the block and around the corner wow and then gonna ask them to meet her there for dinner at the hotel because they have a bar and, and you can eat there and they let you order food and i was like <gasps> you don't lost your damn mind if you mm-hmm. think that's gonna fly he's like i was gonna say no you took my phone before i could read it yeah damn mm-hmm. skippy i did <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so as long as there's boundaries and no issues like that, um, I just, I just want, well, I don't want anything anymore. In life. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> when I was dating, I just wanted someone to give to me what I give to them. Mm-hmm. And that's how I feel about the friend thing. Like when it comes to friends, I will check my male friends if they get out of line. I'll be quick to like, yo, I have a whole dude. You can't call me at this hour. Okay. Or that's inappropriate to say to me. So it's like, if that's how I am, that's how I want you to be. And I have the same respect, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I could. It just has to be a very mature adult respectfulness where there is no love there. If there's love there, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. Even if it's like, we love each other, just it didn't work out. And, you know, because, you know, she's bad with money and money's a big thing for me. So we just didn't work out. But yeah, I mean, yeah, we love each other. But nope, I'm not dealing with that. I don't like being, I don't like being number one. I like being only. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if there's someone else you're having an emotional affair with, I don't do that. Mm-hmm. I'm good at that. 
because the way I look at it is if you get me to want to open up myself and my feelings to you and really let you know who I am, the metaphor, the Shrek metaphor about the onions. Every time you think you got me, you got another layer, you got to peel back. Mm -hmm. But if I meet you and you feel safe enough to let me say, okay, you can peel back my layers and come to find out you peeling back somebody else's layers. Like, no, no, leave me alone. Let someone <laughs> else put me in their salad. You go like with that one. Like it's, it's hard. It's very, very hard for me to open up and uh, communicate my feelings and all of that. So to me, I looked at that as something very, very intimate. To me, that's something I don't give away often. So if I feel like my partner is giving that away to another person, like that crushes me. So that is, that's the only thing. Like there can't be no like emotional affair going on. I would prefer to meet a guy who didn't have a female best friend. Um, That is, <laughs> if I had to build a mate, that would be like right under has a long beard <laughs> and there's only like two other things above that but it has a long beard and then no romantic entanglements with or complications with friends I have the boundaries um so but let me ask you do you think this happens to you do you believe folks when they say they have had male friends and for years like you meet a guy now you date him he has a female best friend he's like oh no i've known Brittany since you you know since we were 12. do you trust that they have never crossed the line no i don't think so yeah it just still crosses my mind like have one of my uh, this guy that it if him and his best friend crossed the line like I never had like real clear cut evidence, but it's something that always crossed my mind. Yeah. Yeah. It could be just a kiss and that's, oh, that, that was nasty. We're not going to do that again. But something happened again to friend zone that person or something. Mm hmm. Because really sometimes it just like, it feels like a friend zone. So, yeah. Yeah. I think, yeah, I, it's, it's hard for me, especially if they're two attractive people. I'd be like, yeah, I feel like at some point it's always something happen. And I feel like y'all yeah, lying. Um, so I did date someone who had a very specific type like he had a very very specific type like all of us looked the same and uh, his female best friend you know to me I could tell she was in love with him and she didn't go extra hard she wasn't inappropriate but like I would catch her just staring at him like he was a god yeah. I would just like I could see her talking about him and like I could see her dimples just deep and all her teeth smiling and grinning and like she looks like she's floating on air when she talks about him. Um, and that was a situation where I knew nothing had happened because she wasn't his type, which doesn't mean anything because Lord knows they don't care. But. <laughs> I knew, I trusted that that was more of a one-sided thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't know, that made me feel more at ease. It shouldn't because, I mean, there's lots of men who like, but yeah, no, it's always awkward when like they look like you. <laughs> and you're like, sir, I feel like you have her to be my understudy. And you're just waiting for that moment. Right, you're right. You're like, eventually she's going to dump me eventually uh i need you to just jump right in <laughs> when that happens i need you to be ready okay. yeah all right it can be done when everybody understands the rules and everybody has agreed to the rules of comfortability and everybody is mature about it and your rules will differ from what my rules are my rules will differ from what neek's rules are it has to be rules that both of you guys feel comfortable in when it comes to that relationship. That's my belief. <laughs> yeah, that is all, guys. We will have a new episode for you guys next Thursday.